When you hear the word kernel, you might think of popcorn, chicken, or popcorn chicken, or the kernel's popcorn chicken. But you might have also come across the same word in a computing context, with folks talking about the Linux kernel or Windows kernel. What the heck is it? The kernel is basically the heart of whatever operating system you're using. Although the kernel is a software component, it sits between your system's hardware and the rest of your OS and software. You see, user software such as your web browser or your favorite game doesn't talk directly to your hardware. Instead, the kernel serves as an intermediary. But why is this necessary? Well, one of the main functions of a kernel is to abstract away the physical differences between hardware setups. There are an endless number of possible hardware configurations in a PC or server. I mean, think of how many rigs you could build just from PC part picker lists. A kernel gives your other software a standardized surface area to interface with making the differences between individual machines much less of an obstacle. As a more easily digestible analogy, kernels provide the low-level plumbing that your software hooks into. The pipes underneath your house might not be all that interesting, but they allow you to make tons of choices as to what you're gonna hook them up to without caring whether it's a dishwasher, a jacuzzi, or that cool RGB showerhead you found on Amazon. What, like I'm gonna see that and just ignore it? Another key function of the kernel is to provide security and stability. Allowing programs to talk to hardware in any way they wanted could allow them to access data they aren't supposed to, which could lead to a system crash or data theft from a malicious process. But because programs have to interface with the system through the kernel, the kernel can prevent these sorts of shenanigans. If you've ever heard the term protected memory space, this is part of what we're talking about. Running programs get their own portion of RAM and can't access memory outside of that thanks to the kernel. But of course, plenty of things can still go wrong. We'll tell you how and how kernels have been designed to prevent crashes right after we thank our sponsor, Odoo. If you're looking to create a website but lack the technical expertise, Odoo is here to help. Building a website is quick and painless with Odoo's open source intuitive platform. Use simple yet comprehensive drag and drop elements to make an eye-catching and engaging page for your audience to interact with, all with no coding experience required. They've also recently introduced their own AI copywriter powered by ChatGPT. So if you find yourself at a loss for words, you can let AI do the heavy lifting for you. Best of all, Odoo's website e-commerce application is 100% free to use, comes with unlimited hosting, and they even pay for your domain name for the first year. So visit the link below and start creating a website for free with Odoo. Traditionally, kernels were designed in one of two main ways. Monolithic, meaning the kernel incorporates most of the main functions of the whole operating system, and microkernel, in which the kernel handles more basic functionality, leaving more software such as device drivers running outside of the kernel. Monolithic kernels tend to be higher performance and easier for programmers to work with, while microkernels have the advantage of being able to kill problematic processes without bringing down the whole system. Now the Windows kernel was designed to be more of a microkernel, while the Linux kernel was more monolithic. But these days, both operating systems have moved towards a hybrid kernel model to try and incorporate the advantages of both design philosophies. For example, Linux is commonly found on servers that need as much uptime as possible. In other words, you don't wanna reboot the whole system if there's an issue, so it makes sense that Linux has moved away from being more purely monolithic and has tried to become more modular. Meanwhile, in Windows land, gamers benefit from the OS adopting a more monolithic philosophy that doesn't have as much overhead, enabling higher performance for folks who are trying to squeeze as many frames as possible out of their rigs. Picture orange juice, but much less tasty. Of course, no matter how you design a kernel, crashes can and do happen. If you've ever heard the term kernel panic, this means the system has entered some kind of unstable or undefined state, and the kernel decides to just halt the system as the OS simply doesn't know what to do next. This is what often causes Windows blue screens. It's not because your computer hates you. But why can't the system, you know, just fix itself instead of needing a reboot? Well, error handling functionality in an OS like Windows has to be written for specific errors. So if the system encounters an error it wasn't written to handle, you'll likely get a kernel panic. But one example of an error the Windows kernel is designed to handle is when your display driver crashes. You know how your screen goes blank, then it comes back up and you get a little notification saying the driver successfully recovered? 
that's a bit of kernel magic that took the developers a great deal of effort to write. So remember that when you get a blue screen, please know your poor kernel is trying its hardest. It just has no idea what to do next. I mean, you wouldn't get mad at your dog for not being able to speak German right, unless it's a German Shepherd, in which case, jail. And you're definitely not going to jail because you watched this whole video. Wow, thanks so much. Hey, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Check out our other videos, comment below with video suggestions, and don't forget to subscribe and follow. Now, <laughs> enjoy your freedom. Watch another video. All right, I don't know.